All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Last video, we took this 55 ton end scale hopper car that I 3D printed, and I showed you how I do some pre-shading and some final painting with an airbrush. Well, since then, I have finished painting all of the 55 ton cars that I have printed out. And I did different shades of red. This one is a lighter shade. I did not do pre-shading with this one. I also did some grays. This is a dark gray one. This is a light gray one. I wanted some difference in my fleet. Oh, this one here is kind of cool. Let me show you real quick. This print actually was a failed print. I don't know if you can see here, but this end lifted off of the build plate and I almost threw it away. But you know what? I think it looks pretty cool. It looks like an actual working coal car that has been damaged over years of its life of service. That happens, right? A lot of people will take a brand new piece of rolling stock and they will damage them to look like, well, this. So we're gonna keep this one. We're gonna weather it today as well. Oh, and one more thing, guys. If you're just thinking about getting into resin printing because you wanna make your own coal cars, your own rolling stock, your own buildings, what have you, one piece of advice, uh, don't drop them on a cement floor. Yeah, guys, resin can be very brittle and this dropped from about four foot onto my cement basement floor and that's all it took for the sand to get destroyed. So be very, very careful if you're going to be resin printing. Also, if you hear some noise in the background, that's my 3D printer going. I'm making some new stuff up for the channel, so it's long, it's a long print, so it's gonna be printing the whole time we're working. So hope the noise doesn't bug too many people. With that being said, guys, today's video, we're gonna finish weathering up these uh, 55 ton hopper cars. If you wanna see how I do it in my style, stick around and let's get to it. All right, before we get started on this weathering paint job for these coal cars, here, are the items that you're going to need to do this and we're going to keep this super simple guys we're only going to be using three colors we're using a burnt umber a burnt sienna and a burnt orange the other things that you're going to need is a sponge any sponge will do that you can tear off little pieces to use because we will be sponging these coal cars you also need a paintbrush and i like to you don't need them but i like to use these little self-closing tweezers to hold my pieces of sponge and small pieces of work with. All right, we're gonna start with these two coal cars here. This happens to be the one that I shot in my last video where I did the pre-shading and the painting with the airbrush. And this is the one that is a little damaged right there. Actually, it's damaged a little bit more. One of the uh, steps is broken away as well. I'm gonna do just these two out of the entire fleet that I have on camera. On this one here, we're gonna give it a stay light to moderate weathering of rust. This one here that is damaged, however, I'm gonna heavily rust, heavily weather this one to make it look like it is almost at the end of its lifespan. With that being said, we're gonna get started with this one. As you can see here, I have my little paint tray out and I have our three colors, our burnt umber, our burnt sienna, and our burnt orange. And I'm going to take my little self-closing tweezers, take the piece of sponge that I tore off, put it in here. Now, like most paint jobs, you're gonna start with your darker color and work to your lighter colors. So we're going to start with the burnt umber first. So I'm gonna dab just a little bit on here. I'm gonna come over to my paper towel and I'm gonna take most of it off. Guys, you wanna build up in just small increments. You don't wanna overdo it because we can always add more. It's very hard to take away. And you just have to think, you know, look at pictures online and think where do you see rust at on these coal cars a lot of the rust is going to be along your bottom where it's going to get a splash from water and mud it's going to cake on there your rails your ladders are going to get rusty because there's a lot of climbing and rubbing the paint off and of course just on the sides are going to be some rust as well so we're going to start with this burnt umber and we're just going to go lightly tap in different spots Okay, here is our first little bit of layer of rust. This is the burnt umber. Okay, now that our burnt umber has dried a little bit, doesn't take long at all with these uh, matte craft paints, we're going to continue on with our burnt sienna. Same process. Now what I'm going to try to do with this 
is going to be a little bit less of a paint because it's a lighter color. I'm going to try to get close to, if not right on top of some of the burnt umber or most of the burnt umber. That way you get a little mixture of the old and a newer rust pattern showing through. And that's the whole name of this game, guys. We're going to be layering. Okay, now I know that it is a very subtle effect. But that's what we're going for, especially on something this small. This is end scale. So we don't want to be too uh, in your face with these colors because it will look very, very fake. Okay, now on to the burnt orange. This one here, very little. This is a super bright color. Even though it's a burnt orange, it's still super bright. So we're going to be very careful with how much we put on of this color. You see, I rotate this sponge quite often. I don't want to have the same kind of effect, the same exact dot pattern on every little piece because then it will definitely look, uh, well, man-made, faked. We want to look unfaked. We want to be that good at faking it. Okay, here it is with all three colors on. Now, as of right now, some of this looks kind of mottled or mottled. Little dots, doesn't look super real. We're going to fix that here, that little trick I was going to tell you about. I told you about it just a second. We're going to do that coming up next. Okay, this little trick I'm going to show you is not a super secret trick. We're just going to use our paintbrush. We're going to take some of this burnt orange. We're going to move some of it over here to this other tray. And then we're going to take our brush and we're going to dip it in our nasty old water. We're going to come over here and we're going to water this down. Yes, you guessed it, we're gonna do kind of like a wash, but it's not a wash, because we're not washing the entire model. We wanna make sure it's nice and watery. We're gonna come back over here, and we're gonna pick out certain areas that have a heavier amount of the burnt orange on it. We're gonna come across, and we're just gonna kinda of blend it down a little bit with this, watered down. Actually, look at that, I have a little air, hair on it. Oh, there we go. I hate it when those brush hairs come out like that. So yeah, we're just going to drag it straight down, kind of like a rainwater effect. Now, as you see, I don't particularly like this. A little bit too much, so we're actually going to get with just some plain water. And we're going to come back and we're going to kind of pull that out a little bit. Take a paper towel, do a little dabbing. Take away some of that overabundance. Remember guys, nothing wrong. You can do it any way you want to. All right, well here we go. This is pretty much what I'm going to consider finished. The only thing I'm going to do after this is, like, like I said earlier, I'm going to top coat this with a matte clear enamel to protect the paint job. Pretty simple, right? Alright, now that we have the body of our coal car done, let's not forget one of the important parts that will really bring this whole thing together, and that is the trucks and the wheels. We need to weather these as well. Um, again, this is why I like using these self-closing tweezers. Hold these little parts really well to uh, paint on. And this guys, this is a wheel holder that I designed. Actually, you can find this if you want over on my page at Cults 3D. It is a completely free download. If you have a 3D printer, download the files for this. I have them for the N-Scale wheels here. These are 36 inch and scale wheels. I also have them, as you can see sitting back there, a set for HO scale wheels as well. Again, this file is totally free. Go download it, print it out, 
make yourself a set of wheel holders. All right, let's get started. It is the exact same process as we did for the body of our coal car. We're gonna start with our burnt umber. And again, just very lightly. Now, I do believe the side frames on most older pieces of rolling stock in real life are going to be a little more heavily weathered than the actual cars themselves just because they get a lot of dirt and grime and water. I mean, they're closer to the ground, right? So they're gonna get most of the nasties right up front. Okay, well there is our trucks, the knuckle couplers weathered. I certainly do hope that the colors are showing up okay on this camera. I have about five lights surrounding me, and to me it seems like a little dark still. But that's the truck done. All right, doing the wheels, it's a rinse and repeat just like we did for the body and for the trucks. We're going to start with our burnt umber and work our way through. Now the nice thing about using a wheel holder like this is it helps to protect the tread area of the wheels. But don't forget, once we are done painting these, I'll come back with my fingernail or something and I will scrape the paint off the little tips here, the points that go into the truck. So we will make sure those are clean. It's easier to clean them off than it is to try to tape them off, trust me. Especially at this scale. So again, just start with a burn umber. Let's get in there and dirty them up. All right, guys, there's our wheels all done. Okay, here is our damaged coal car. This is the one that I'm going to weather very heavily. It is going to be the same exact process that we did for this coal car, except for it's going to be a lot more. So I'm not going to show every bit of it. I'm just going to fly through it real quick. So let's get to it. If you want to watch, I'll make this video, you know, kind of like fast forwardy so you can watch. If not, just skip to the end and we'll look at both of them together. So here we go. All right, folks, we are done with the weathering of these coal hoppers. And as you can see, we went from these 3D printed and very simply painted coal hoppers to this. Just look at that weathering. Man, these turned out super slick. And you know, we did it with just three easy colors. Three colors you can find at almost any craft store. Now, if you like what you saw here today, guys, I would like for you to do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. That really helps my channel out when YouTube sees that you guys like what I am producing. It gets my video out there in front of more people. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out. If you'd like to go the extra mile and help me out just a little bit more, head over to Calls 3D. I will stick a link in the description below and pick up an N scale or an HO scale wheel holder. The files for these are totally free, guys. Download them. If you have an FDM printer, print them out. I don't know how well these will work on a resin printer because resin is kind of brittle. But on an FDM printer, these work fantastic because F, you know, PLA is pretty flexible. With all of that being said, if you would really like to show me some love, if you have a resin printer, buy the file for this coal car, guys. 
I do not charge a whole heck of a lot of money for my files. You know, I think I charge like maybe $5 for the file for this. And with that $5, you can print one cool car or you print 500 cool cars. It costs you $5. The only thing you have to add to it, of course, are the wheels and trucks. With that being said, this design, as a matter of fact, I have other pieces of rolling stock on my uh, page at Calls 3D, and they all have been designed to be used with these Bachman and scale roller bearing freight trucks and wheels. You can use other ones. I have in the past purchased used trucks and wheels from swap meets, and usually I have to drill out the center of the bearing hole there to fit over the bearings on these trucks and wheels. But you know, we're modelers, we can make it work. Now, these here are printed with resin printers because of the super high detail. You cannot print this car on an FDM printer with PL PLA filament, I am sorry to say, but I got you covered. Here is the same car, same overall design size-wise that was printed and designed for an FDM printer. As a matter of fact, I designed this car probably a year, year and a half ago before I came back and designed this for a resin printer just because when I first started out, all I had was an FDM printer, did not have a resin one. I have other items on my uh, page over there. I have a uh, flat car, a gondola, and a box car along with um, a bunch of buildings that I have designed. All of those are printable with an FDM printer if you like. So with all that being said guys, I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. It means the world to me. So God bless and happy railroading everybody.